Ziad, uh, this yeah. is uh, Ajit Menon. You have about 10 minutes uh, to pull us through the okay. case. Okay, so well, let me walk you well, let me walk you through our angiogram first. Can see it. Okay, so this is the patient. You can see there's a tight proximal LAD lesion, large first diagonal. This is the AP cranial, again, showing a proximal LAD lesion, a large wraparound left anterior descending. And you can also see that there's circumflex disease. Actually, this is a very large ramus supplying the lateral wall. The circumflex is actually a, um, a uh, anomalous vessel. So what we did is the first thing we wanted to do was actually to show you how to do a OCT in a very tight lesion, which we did. So what you can see here is we're filling the distal vessel with contrast and then injecting proximally. So can you guys switch to the OCT for us? So again, what we're doing is we're injecting through the 3cc catheter. And then once the distal vessel fills, we inject antegrade through the main vessel. All right, so um, that's one of the tricks we saw you do on Twitter. I tried to do it myself, it never worked, but today it worked. Okay, it never worked. So, you know, uh, having me around was good luck today. Don't touch anything else. Okay, so maybe. Um, all right, so what you can see is we have the distal vessel. You can actually get quite a, a nice run, right? We can see all the plaque morphology and you see on the automated measures using this technique, we can have the entire vessel distal to proximal, okay? So uh, go back to the uh, angiogram, please. Okay, so what we did actually is uh, we then dilated the, the uh, circumflex. And then what we did is uh, we actually decided to get, to get a little bit of better run. We uh, went ahead and dilated to do, the, after we placed our circumflex stent, and our circumflex, you showing the circumflex OCT, guys? I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. So the circumflex OCT, I want to run through this relatively quickly because there's uh, some action in the case. Okay. So what we did is here, here you can see our distal vessel. We're going to use the MLD max approach. And so what you'll be able to see here is our distal vessel actually measured at 2.89. There's our marker right here, right there. So this was distal 2.9 and proximal, here's the, the LAD. So we came three millimeters back and we chose an 18 stent. Go back to the angiogram, please. And this is our 18 stent going in. And then we crushed uh, this with a uh, 3.0 uh, compliant balloon. And then what we did is we used a pot to use a 4-0 at the very proximal, okay, just to do the very proximal dilation. And then after we did, this is the, our first, three, this is the 3-0, just pushing the struts to the side. Again, okay, looking good. This is our 4-0, which we're very, you can see we use device detection to make sure we're in the right spot. Okay, again, you can see we're in device detection. Okay, and that's the next shot. Any comments from the audience? Speechless, okay, we were too. So what we did is we immediately used a 3.0 compliant balloon and uh, stopped the bleeding. Uh, we made sure that we had perfusion into the circumflex. And then the next step we did was actually to put a ping pong guide in. Actually, no, the next thing you'll see is uh, obviously a pericardial drain. So we put a pericardial drain to stabilize the patient. Uh, we were able to get the blood pressure back. And then what we did is we actually used a double uh, guide system. So you can see we have a ping pong system. And this is when the fun began. The fun began because we had a 275 stent protruding into the left main. And despite the crush, we were not able to advance the graft master into the vessel despite multiple attempts. We then repeated our kissing balloon inflation. We used a 4 compliant balloon inflation. We tried to put the graft master through the eight French guide. And despite everything, we weren't able to. And that's because there was a protrusion from the circumflex tendon. Exactly. So the next step, which we normally do in this situation, because a graft master will only go through a six French system, 
is to advance a guide extension catheter into the LAD so that we could unsheath the graft master. Unfortunately, we don't have any seven French guideliners. So now we really had to be intuitive. So we basically went back and forth with kissing balloon inflations, which didn't work. And finally, what we ended up doing was some homemade DIY work. What we did is we took a six French multi-purpose guide, which but fit- that, oh. let them have a look at the next one. See, that's what happens when we tried the graph master. Great you point, Ryan. So the next one, right. So again, we, we sealed it. Go next, go next. Because we moved really front. It's still leaking. Next. So we were trying to, we obviously can't occlude Next. the circumflex. Again, we so tried. here you can't, we're advancing and Ronnie's pushing as hard as he can here. You can see it's caught on the struts. Next. Next. Now, during this time, the patient had repeated episodes, probably we, 20 we, episodes of ventricular tachycardia. Next. At least 20. So uh, the team here did an amazing Next. job gave amiodarone and um, stabilized the patient. We were calling for ECMO. What are you looking for, Ronnie, to show them? No, no. Once oh, you, you well, I know that. what you're talking about. Yes. So you can see how many attempts we made. Okay, so now no. we this, again, you're going to see this won't go. The, uh, the, the guide extension catheter, won't, uh, that, sorry, the, uh, the graph master won't go. Now you can see here what we've done is we've actually anchored a balloon, I'll keep going so you can see this. There's our kissing attempt again. And this is probably where we got, okay, we, here we go. Now what we did is we left all our wires in place to think that we weren't behind a strut and we rewired the LAD through the eight French guide with a 360 wire. We then advanced a multi-purpose six French longer guiding catheter inside of our shorter guiding catheter and what you'll see here is balloon inflation. And then what we do is we actually push the six French guide. I think it's here. No, next. That's after okay. This. Yeah. Now this, what we're doing is I'm pulling back, we're inflating, and now Ronnie's going to push the eight French multipurpose, sorry, six French multipurpose guide into and past and we crossed that. The stent. And then we actually were finally able to put our graph master in. We use device detection to deploy our graph master. This is a 2.8 graph master by 19. We, by the way, we actually used our seven French guide and had a 2.5 compliant balloon in the circumflex in order to snorkel in case we shut the circumflex down. And you can see there's the circumflex balloon. We then have just finished by doing a kissing balloon inflation. That's post dilating the this, stem graft. We kiss. We post dilated with the 30NC at 20 atmospheres. This is a kissing balloon inflation. This is where we are in the case. If you have a papyrus uh, type of covered stent, you drop one a little more easily. Craft master, a little more bulky, always troubles. Yeah, yeah. real trouble. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a final OCT for you to show you how many graft master struts are in the LED. Uh, sorry, in the left main. And uh, honestly, I think uh, Ronnie and I have had enough for the day for live cases. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, you know, we we tried to think of everything. We planned for ECMO. We um, used multiple uh, different techniques. Now, one trick that we had to do to the guide is we had to slice off the white plastic connector at the very proximal edge, the 10 centimeters. So I did that uh, in order to give us enough length. That's plenty, I think. The technique we use for uh, Lima interventions so the guide length is short, and then we can cut it and then you use it. That's what. So we'll just give you a, a, a final shoot. I'll just give you a manual shoot so that, uh, uh, can we go, okay, uh, are we ready with the OCT? Let me just see Let me just my guide the catheter a little yeah. bit. Yeah, okay. The guides. You well, want to go in a little bit? I, I want to go a little bit more in. Yeah, let's get the edge. We need to get that edge inside. Okay, that's All good. Right, so, okay, great.
No, 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 I'm not ready. Okay, I'll stop. Wait, stop. Okay. All right. I'll do it. All right. Okay. Are you ready? Let me calibrate. Ready when you are, Ronnie. Yep. Cine. Okay. We have a little left main day section. But we can manage that. We can manage that. We can manage that even with a regular stent. Okay. So, um, what we're going to show you is there's our uh, there's the distal graft master edge. Check it once again. Nice. There's a wire. Just pull the wire back a little bit. Okay, and there is the circumflex right there. So we have a little bit of space. This is our left main. We do have a left main dissection, which we'll have to tack up with a regular stent. Now, what did we learn from this case? What we learned is that probably one of the reasons this happened is because if you live, look in the very proximal LED, this is a very negatively remodeled vessel, right? And so this is one of the issues where you, you can't see around, but the first time that we can see some resemblance of vessel, which is after this branch, this artery is actually negative remodeled, right? So we're getting around 1.9. So, um, I mean, I, I, you guys have any questions? You, I think the key here was to persevere uh, in order to get the graft master in, which we ended up doing use a longer six French multipurpose guide, put in a shorter eight French um, EBU 3.5, which we anchored with a balloon and pushed as hard as we could to break the struts. And then we deployed our graft master. Z and uh, Ronnie, fantastic save. I mean, this is obviously a, a tough case. I mean, you guys handled it masterfully to get to where you guys are. I mean, I think one of the main teaching lessons here is obviously the negative remodeling, which you obviously highlighted. But the second part is if you don't have a papyrus dent, I would strongly advocate for getting them. They're much more deliverable. They can actually be put through five French uh, guides, not even six. And on top of that, because they're polyurethane, you can actually puncture them easily. So let's just say our, you had a crossover uh, yeah. from the LAD into the left main and you closed off the circ, you can puncture it and reestablish flow, which you can't really do with a graft master. But it, yeah. you guys <clears throat> basically Unfortunately, in India, we don't have the papyrus stent available because there is uh, some control, stent price control and... Uh, Papyrus becomes a, a, a non-drug eluding stent and therefore the costs are low. So I think that's why papyrus went off the shelf, but it's available in, in some select areas. So what's the, the, the run of the mill covered stent for us is still the graph master. I think uh, Ronnie, Dr. Matthew, Dr. Zia, uh, fantastically done case. For want of time, I think we'll have to close this uh, session here. I'm sure we would like to see the end result uh, once you do it. And probably during the next session, we can have a short uh, run of your, um, the, the, the end result that you got. But it's, 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 it's a wonderfully managed case. Um, and uh, I think hats off to all of you guys. Wonderful. That's Thank great. You. Thank you.